Spoilers for Overlord Season 4, Episode 10. If you wish to watch the show, here is your warning. If you don't care, you can continue forward. Man, if you ever wanted to know how to see someone as human, this certainly is an episode that will show you. Why I say that is because this episode is where the war begins with the Sorcerer King and one of the other regions. And of course our main character's army is just absolutely wrecking. But what is great to see in this episode is towards the end, where the prince rides his horse to try and talk to the king for some attempt at mercy or surrender. They show up and they're absolutely terrified by the king's presence, his look, his physique. Yet each are very respectable of each other as they both know that they are the leaders of their own regions. So they show that nobility and respect towards each other. They meet each other on equal footing, one on one, without any extras to show hostility. This is important in conversation because it shows that you wish to hear the other person out. But then, there is an offering of water. Starting like this breaks tension. Even small gestures like offering a drink, showing an essence of caring. This starts off showing that both are individuals that they have a need and it can completely melt away any labels or preconceived notions even before a word is said. And even look at the setting. The prince is not at all at the level of the king, but he is treated as such. This is so important to conversations. If we fail to consider someone as one of our own, we fail to see them as a person. Now that the two can see each other on equal grounds, it is now time to hear what each side has to say. And so the prince starts his question. Why have you chosen to engage in such needless cruelty? Why won't you accept our plea of surrender? Hmm. Because there's no benefit in accepting your surrender. How is that? It is more advantageous for us to make an example out of you. And in doing so, show the world how foolish it is to oppose the Sorcerer Kingdom. To that end, we will decimate all of your forces. Then we shall march upon the capital and reduce it to naught but a pile of rubble. And thus it shall remain, for hundreds or even thousands of years, a lasting monument to the folly of opposing the Sorcerer Kingdom. This part of the conversation is important because it falls a lot into human psychology. It's much easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to repent and take the consequences for any wrongdoings. But then again, this leads perfect into the next part, so let's just listen. That seems so close-minded. What? You possess such great power, so there are countless ways that you could demonstrate it to the world. <clears throat> and yet you have chosen to be vindictive instead. One might think so. This is such a great saying here. The king acknowledges what he is doing may be bad, and how others may see him as a cruel king for doing such things. But that's just how a lot of this kind of ends up being where we only understand what we understand but when you open yourself up more to others you tend to understand how others feel and how they may think of your actions do you have a goal in doing this how shall i answer that my goal is simple but shapeless it is honest and straightforward but it slips through one's fingers so easily in short there is only one thing that i am searching for Happiness. That can't be all. In the end, is that not the prize that all creatures yearn for? Living and undead. And to achieve that, you would rob others of their happiness. Is that such a surprise? My only purpose is to bring prosperity to those I treasure. If I can do that, why should I care what happens to anyone else? If your people could only achieve happiness by making the people of another country suffer, what would you do? Would you tell your subjects to give up on their own joy? This one goes deep. Ultimately, we are all striving to protect and provide for those that we care for. We may even hurt others to provide for our own. If your own loved one's happiness was powered by suffering from another, would you be able to tell them that they should stop their joy? It's certainly a hard decision when you command more than just your family and instead an entire kingdom. This happens a lot in the real world, mainly in politics. Because we tend to agree on a lot of things, but we just get caught up on how to solve the problem that we never end up actually addressing the problem itself. Now, I follow the golden rule, which is treat others how you wish to be treated. And you can see this a lot within the conversation where the prince apologizes for any outbursts he does during the conversation. Pure sophistry! 
I do apologize, Your Majesty. Please, I take no offense. That's quite the strange goddess. Uh, pardon me. I didn't intend to belittle your deities. I simply never heard of such a thing. Forgive my rudeness. No, I only meant it as a turn of phrase, not an object of worship. What the king does here is important because it's important to validate that someone may have made a mistake rather than try and punish them for it. You can see how he takes no offense to the outburst or doesn't argue about the value of worshipping a deity even though he used one as an example. And that's what's important in conversations because sometimes you may not know that something exists or it may uh, hurt someone but the other may should understand as well that this person may not know what hurts me so I should not get hurt by what they say. Even though the king is going to murder everyone that the prince tries to protect, there is no hatred between them. The prince even laughs towards the end since he was able to get a form of mercy. And even the king got to see the person in the prince, even thinking to himself on how that man is a proper royal. The prince finally gets back to his tent and his subordinate asks if the king is the monster that everyone says they are. And straight from the prince's mouth? So what kind of monster was this sorcerer king? I'd say he was surprisingly human. But it's true. He was certainly a monster on the outside, all bones and such. But on the inside, he's just like any other person. The prince came to the king with lots of preconceived notions. That is, the king was a ruthless dictator, yet he found that he is rather human in his demeanor as well. And what I really love about this towards the end is that the prince ends up having to deal with rebels, that chop off his head and gives it to the king as a sort of loyalty. And this just ends in the king not giving any mercy at all to the troops. Don't hold back. Use the full extent of your strength however you see fit. Do not let a single one of them escape this battlefield alive. Dang. I also want to look at the scene shown with all the rebels. They are not at all on the same level as the king. They are giving respect, yes. However, unlike the prince, they are only there for selfish gain. Though their only wish is to please and save their own skin. The king sees this and proceeds to send them to a place to torture them and their families for the rest of their lives. But besides that, I really wanted to highlight this conversation because it's a thing that happens a lot lately in today's world. People get turned off by a person's labels, their politics, or even their skin color. And they don't end up seeing the person behind all those labels. And heck, if a ruthless undead can be seen as human, why don't we try a little harder ourselves to try and talk to people without all the hate? 